Hey there and welcome or welcome back to our channel. On this channel, we talk about mental health with a special focus on borderline personality disorder and dissociative identity disorder. I'm Shell and today we're going to focus on BPD and how the fear of abandonment and unstable relationships are related to each other. For me, my fear of abandonment fuels my unstable relationships. I am always waiting for the other person to leave. It doesn't matter if it's friends, family, or romantic partners. No matter how much reassurance they give me, I always think one wrong move and they're gone. When I start a new friendship or relationship, I go all in. In friendships, the other person is amazing. I think they're so cool and I wanna hang out with them all the time. Eventually, the newness of it wears off and I become less intense. I can still have strong feelings in those friendships though. If I text a friend and they don't respond right away, I always go to the worst possibilities. They hate me, They're, they've gotten sick of me, they never really liked me and I should never have trusted them in the first place. If my anxiety is bad, I can start to think that something bad has happened. When they do finally get back to me, I am both relieved and angry and that anger can come out in passive aggressive comments. My friendships can be very black and white. Either I am so lucky to have them in my life or they're horrible and I never should have trusted them. How I feel about them completely depends on our most recent interaction. My fear of abandonment makes me a people pleaser. I think that if I make no mistakes, they won't leave. So I try very hard not to talk about any problems going on in my life. Well, at the same time, I aim to be their main go-to person. As long as I am helpful and useful, they'll stay. I'll do things I don't really want to do and keep quiet if my opinions contradict theirs. I overanalyze every interaction. I look for any sign of rejection. If they seem bored or distracted, I'll assume it's because of me. I think I'm talking too much about myself and my interests and I'll shut down. I will change the topic to be about them to keep them interested. This becomes a pattern and it really hurts my self-image. I'll start to think they don't really care about me or are using me. I'll start to pick apart every conversation to see what I did wrong and try to correct it. I try to mold myself into what I think the other person wants me to be and this can make me very depressed. If it's someone I talk to often, then it will start to be too painful. I might cut off communication or I can explode at the other person. All of this is exacerbated with romantic partners. I fall in love quickly and easily, and it's almost impossible for the other person to match my emotions. My partner will become my everything. I will want to be with them 24 seven. I want constant text messages. My entire mood depends on them. When I hear from them and our interactions are positive, then I feel great. But if I feel even a hint of abandonment or rejection, I become extremely depressed. I might self-harm to deal with those strong emotions, or I can become suicidal. Nothing can make me feel better until I feel better about the relationship. I will also shape myself to be like the person I'm with. I'll dress the way they like. I'll stifle my interests to focus on theirs. My opinions will start to match theirs. My entire identity will become based on the other person. So when the relationship ends, I'm left reeling and wondering who I am. I have quiet BPD, so most of this is internalized. My friends don't ever realize the emotional roller coaster I'm riding. I'm, at first, my partners won't see it either. But if the relationship lasts more than a couple of months, then the cracks will start to show. I'll start voicing my anger when they don't call or text. I'll become moody because I don't feel important. I'll start thinking they don't actually care about me or I can suspect them of cheating. I'll look for any tiny sign that they are going to abandon me. I know this is extremely exhausting for the other person. My emotional outburst causes them to start walking on eggshells, which makes things worse because then I think they don't trust me. They can feel smothered or exhausted by my constant need for reassurance. They can start to feel like nothing they do is right. I know this because they've told me. On my end, it's hard to see what I did wrong. From my perspective, I've given them all of me to be what they want. And why can't they understand that? And as they get more frustrated, I get more depressed. It all sounds pretty hopeless, which is why BPD is so painful. 
but I'm learning. If people don't text me back right away, I start to list possible reasons that have nothing to do with me. I've spent the summer getting to know myself so that my entire identity isn't based on someone else. I'm learning to express my anger calmly before it gets too big and explodes. I'm starting to share my problems and interests with other people, although this is still really hard for me to do. I'm trying to find things I enjoy so I am not left spiraling if people don't get back to me. I'm learning not to be obsessed. What can friends and family do to help? For one thing, don't start a pattern you can't continue. Don't call me every day if it's going to turn into once a week. If there's going to be a time that you're not available, let me know in advance. Try to follow through on the things that you say you'll do. If you say you're going to call me at a certain time, actually call me at that time. Pay attention to the scales of the relationship. Are all of our conversations about you? Do I tend to cut myself off if I'm talking about me? Do we always do things that you want to do? Chances are I'm stifling myself to make you feel better. But most importantly, understand that you are not responsible for my actions. It is not your fault if I self-harm. You shouldn't change your life around just to be able to be there as much as I want you to be. You deserve to live your life without having to worry about me all the time. The fear of abandonment can make it really difficult when it comes to friendships and other relationships. And it is often what is informing all of my interactions. The things that I do in my relationships are because of my fear of abandonment. So in order to really help that, not only do I have to learn how to change my behaviors in those relationships, but I also have to learn that if people leave, I'm still going to be okay. I may always have a fear of abandonment, but I don't have to always allow it to affect my relationships.